Thanks for staying with us. So according to United Nations, October 4th every year, which is yesterday, is World Habitat Day. And the theme for this year is accelerating urban action for a carbon-free world. So commemorating this day, we have an environmental analyst who has partnered with different tiers of government in delivering sustainable solutions for the growing Lagos metropolis. Welcome with us, Tadi Cash. Thank you. Good to have you on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Good Thank you. So yesterday in the papers, we saw at uh, Makoko, I mean, yeah. that's always everybody's reference point when you come to um, environmental decadence, obviously, because, because it's, 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 it's a huge community that could actually generate revenue. But unfortunately, environmental degradation of, is one of the issue, issues with that, with that environment. So as World Habitat Day was celebrated yesterday, what are some of the lessons we can learn to ensure and help communities like that to retrace their steps and begin to build healthier environments for their citizens? All right, thank you very much. Um, the first thing we need to realize is that water is not our enemy. And I, like the legend, the late legend would say, you know, um, let me use your word now. It will say that mm -hmm. water is not an enemy. And so we have to learn to treat the slum as an opportunity where people are coming to find a livelihood for themselves. So all that we need to do is to find a way to upgrade this place because you cannot eradicate snob. They are everywhere in the world. What you just need to do is that the more urbanized that we are, the more the urban poor we are going to have. I mean, okay. people will be coming to find a way in the city. Mm. So all we need to do is to create an enabling environment to use the resources that is embedded in the same environment so that the people can find their own livelihood. The government cannot provide livelihood for everyone. Now, but what the government could do is just to provide an enabling environment. Some people have found their own habitat in a place where it may not be comfortable to you and I. Mm. Now, what you need to do for them is to make sure that where they are found, they can, take a, they can use it maximally and it's still going to be benefiting the society at large. Mm. And so that is what needs to be the next focus, you know, the, the way we look at things, and which is a big asset loss for us because our perception about all of those things are not very rightly placed. So what do you understand? William, do you want to go? Okay. Um, the question is, we hear about Problem with uh, the Nigeria story is it a lack of creativity? Is it a lack of information? Is it what is it that we're lacking that we're unable to harness the positives that we can get from these slums? Yeah, yeah. It begins with, like I said before, it begins with the perception. We have to begin to the way you look at things determine what you see from it. So if you begin to look at slum from an opportunity, you know, rather than just seeing it as, oh, uh, never do well people, uh, this is where they find themselves, and then one day government will wake up and say, oh, I think we just need to get rid of this environment. No, you can't get rid of that environment that way. What you need to do is to make sure that there is a positive in this zone. So what can we do about these positives? That is the beginning. Because without that, you are going to, lives are involved. Now, in all of the storms in Lagos, statistics say that we have more than 300,000 people living in this storm. So what do you do with the 300,000 people? And then it's going to create more problems for more people that think they have a better life to live in the city. So it's about finding a way to make it uh, possible for them right. to be able to live a better life. So, uh, uh, help me understand how it is to develop. Makoko, for instance, as case in study, that's a slum that is on water. And we had the um, one that, you know, was former governor um, in the in Lekki at the time. How do you develop these areas? Because when government decides to do it, it is capital intensive. Yeah. If Nigerians don't bring their mentality of something, we can always build floating houses. How affordable is floating houses to, to this? And can these people who live there already afford to buy it if the government were to do it in an arrangement like you know some of the homes that they have? OK, thank you. Now, this is it. Floating houses is possible. Mm -hmm. um, is, remember that these people are already living there. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the first thing. That's where they live. And that's why you call an habitat. That means they found a comfort 
living that in that zone. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing. Now, what you need to do, remember that it's beyond living for them. It's mm -hmm. also a livelihood for them. Mm -hmm. Because most of these people living here, they are into fishing and all of those mm -hmm. things. So what do you do? You want to make sure that you reduce some of the nuisance that is happening within that zone. Now, government will not build the place because the only thing that will happen is that government will get rid of these people and then begin to find a way to sand fill the state. And these are the conversations going on, even among them living there. That, oh, government wants to send us out of this place and then they can sand fill it and the rich people in the society will come and take it over and that will be the end of it. But no, it's about creativity. For instance, Lagos State is the smallest land mass in Nigeria. Now, that means that smallness, we need, to have, we need to be big on creativity. We need to realize that there are many waterways here. And most people live at the corridor of these waterways. What do we do? Can you provide alternative? What kind of houses? You can't build a bricks and mortar houses in those kind of places. Yeah. It can't do that. All right. So, I mean, well, I went to Badagri not too long ago. And, lived, and that community, there were a lot of people in that community. I felt that they were uncomfortable in their community, their fishermen. And many of them were happy. You could see that their children, the, you know, the whole community was fishing. And they seemed comfortable in, their own, in, in, in that space. But I think one of the key things I've seen with these water, lock community, water, water area community is the fact that waste management is poor. Yes. Because if we can actually clear waste, their trash and even their, their, um, bio, their um, mm -hmm. other, other, other wastes, yeah. that could actually help clean up that community. What can we do for those people living around those waterways? How do we help them with their waste management? Okay, firstly, let me give you a very practical example for my own end. Um, about almost a year ago, I, I bought a particular property in, uh, in the mainland here, at somewhere in Solo. And then when I bought the asset, I discovered that the old place is fully flooded. And then I have to approach the government and say, oh, these waterways, we would like to, you know, walk around it. And then after a while, they gave the permission to walk around it. We cleared all of the drainages. And that's, uh, after about one month of doing that, you find out that that place that had been like that forever just dried off. That means most places in Lagos that we call marginal lands, they are not necessarily marginal lands. They, they, they are like that because of blockages. Wow. And so as a result of that, water must find its way. So if water, if, you know, if the drainages are blocked, water will surely go back to the land. And after a while of staying there, it begins to stink and all of those things begin to happen. And most people just believe this is how it has always been. So the first thing is maintenance routine, you know, clearing of drainages must be systemic. It's not something that must happen accidentally. So uh, sometime in July, we knew what happened, you know, all around Lekki, everywhere was flooded. Now the truth is, that is not government's problem, but this is it. Even individuals must take responsibility for the environment they live in. So all the drainages are blocked, people driving big cars with a downfall brain, you know, they go around, drink a, a particular drink, and just drop away your can along the road. Where's those things going to land? They're going to land somewhere. So it begins with taking responsibility and realize that water wants to flow. If water wants to flow and is blocked, it must find its way. Nobody can stop it. So mm. that begins from the maintenance, putting things in proper place, realizing that we must become friendly with water. Mm. I think that's one of the biggest problems I have found in the last 10 years. Most of us, we have this perception about water as if it's coming against us. But water is there as our friend. All right, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. We're still discussing World Habitat Day. So before the break, I think it was... Um, Raki, I wanted to ask a question. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I know you're 60 plus. The, the technical... <laughs> it just affected my brain. Let me um, go, go ahead. The, um, when I asked the question earlier about how to make it work in Makoko, for instance, does it not, can it not work by educating the people do they have to build, build their houses in shanties? They, to build a floating house, in material, major material will be wood. Can you not then use good wood and create beautiful uh, architectural structures that can float? Must it be shanties? Because when you look at it from the Third Mainland Bridge, for instance, it's a site that government and in the mega city plan, site to build of our city. 
So, I, as an average man, because we would like to compare to floating cities around the world, when you see them build their own, you think it was their government that went to build it for them and give them. You know, these are people with beautiful ideas. Why do we... Can't we just reorientate our people and give them better ways to think and solve problems? Yeah, thank you. Um, shanty towns exist everywhere. And it's, it's very important that it begins with thinking. Um, the Western thinking is not necessarily mm -hmm. the kind of thinking that our people have. So our people have the thinking of surviving. And that's what you saw when you see those kind of houses. So um, you can, they can rebuild the place, but you know that that may not be possible fully in our own lifetime. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it's going to take a lot and you have to face the reality of this conversation. People could be moved out of that place, but the question is to where? No, so, don't move them out. Tell they, them they are to comfortable the way they are. <laughs> so, you, are you think to you is a shanty, is a, is a shanty house. So then exactly, are, you'll be surprised. No. But so I think healthier. And people partnership can yes. get us where we are going. Government wants a beautiful edifice. People want to survive. And it's still affordable. You can have them think better. So I can I live in a two bedroom. I say it all the time. I don't I'm not, I'm not wealthy like I would love. Yeah. So you can have but you create a comfortable. Yes. yes sir. It, Okay. Create comfortable, <laughs> beautiful place. But from what you just said, said, now, uh -huh. they know um, affordability has a formula. Uh -huh. So the first thing is household income. The second thing is regulation. Uh -huh. The third thing then, when you have put those regulations into place, is land supply. So when you want to say that, oh, a particular house is affordable, you know, just like what we call in Nigeria, most of what we call luxury in uh -huh. terms of apartment, there are nothing luxury about them. Yes. It's just uh, based on what our people have seen before. Uh -huh. And someone else, oh, if I put this kind of stuff, I put in a smart house, this is going to be luxury. But luxury is more than all of those things that people mention. So when you look at that and think about these people, number one, the household income of these people can even afford them to be able to wait till... This is people that want life right now. You know, they are used to that kind of life. Like, okay, I make it now, I spend my life. So it yeah. is very, it's quite dicey. So you what have to understand the, that. What is the solution? The solution. The solution remains that for us to do what we have to do, we have to realize that there is a problem with us. And this problem, we'll find a way to accommodate it. We'll find a way to say that, okay, um, government have to find a way to relate with developers, people that build estate, people that build apartments, and say, okay, do you understand the dynamics of water system? How can we begin to create a new set of settlements in the areas of all of these things? For me, for instance, that's what I've done for the last 10 years. So build houses around, you know, watering area, create a different kind of environment. Now, when these people see what is going on, they begin to, they have to see something. Now, I mean, for, for, as of today, there is nothing you can really show them that is so, you know, clear. That, okay, this is right. what we're going to build for yeah. you. This kind of environment we're right. going to create in the long run. You can see it. But if, because, this, this, uh, this year's theme is saying accelerating urban action for carbon free. Exactly. So these and urban cities are responsible for most of the carbon emissions we see. Exactly. So what can, as, as an urban planning, urban planning, what can they do? to prevent more of these carbon toxins out in the air? It, just like what we have been saying, it, it boils down to the same thing. Now, for us to have a carbon-free society, one thing remains, the, way we, the kind of houses we build, we need to realize that Lagos State in year 2000 was 7 million people. This is year 2021. We have more than 22 million people. That means we have more people now coming to Lagos. A particular statistic states that Lagos State, more than 23,000 people come to Lagos, and more than 60% of them never return to where they are coming from. In other words, people keep coming to Lagos. People keep so trooping to Lagos. Driving, we have to begin to think creatively about how so, we well, do we have cars, say. we have generators, we have buses. Yes, we have, what are we going to do? Think, now, th th these things keep increasing because people come, the waterway systems are not fully there for people to use alternative kind of transportation because you also realize that transportation is real estate issue. It's very important that all of these things are put together. The solution yes. is they have to be collaboration. Government can do it. Government can only do the regulation part of this thing and make sure that, okay, we're going to provide this and we're providing this not in an audio way, in a systemic <laughs> way. And then people that can solve this problem go around solving it and say, okay, we have the solution. It can do it. It has been done all around the world. It can be done here. And people are doing it. Not just me alone. All the companies are also there making things happen. And I think that can be the solution people, to People problem. have fears. People have fears. Because I remember Morocco. 
where a lot of people used to live. Yes. A lot of people with less um, <coughs> income lived in those areas. Exactly. Then one day the government came and just wiped everything down. And what did they build? They built house for themselves, rich, rich people. So that's what we know today as Lekki 1, Lekki 2, these, these, all the... I'm living in the island. On the island. <laughs> it's what they have. So what will happen? So these people will now fear that once you drive them and start to build whatever you're going to build, they will not have anywhere to stay. They will now be homeless. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so, so but go ahead, Mike, because I'm, I'm looking at the, how do we then prioritize this? Because there's so many mm -hmm. things we have issues. We are dealing with the security, <laughs> we're dealing with the economy, we're dealing with infrastructure deficit, education, healthcare. Mm -hmm. Environmental discussions aren't really priorities for most governments, really, around right. the world. You so see, how do you prioritize? Since we do everything, almost everything ourselves. I was not, Lagos State was not even case in study when this worried me. The, la the water reclaiming areas in Ondo, the documentary Sarah did, worried me. These are people who are illagers. They are used to living on water. Well, how about making it beautiful such that to even become tourist attraction? Government teams themselves will come and say, okay, this is what we need to show. How did culture start? How did art, um, uh, architectural designs start anywhere in the world? By people. In the, it's the small mindset. Why do I have to build a one-shop shanty? On water, when I can use the same material to build this and put lights and make it beautiful, why do I, I want people to stay, say, "Oh, I live in"? Why, why can't That's I make right. it beautiful, make the place? So look we, have, we have to have, we have to wrap up on and this. But I, I like Sadi Cash to wrap up. With, let us know exactly what we can do. I mean, as I said yesterday, we said a better world habitat day. What, what final message do we give to Nigerians at this morning? Now, it remains that the most part of land, uh, I use Lagos as a statistic, as a case study because this is where I specialize. Now. Most of the land remaining in Lagos now, we call them marginal lands. What that means is that most of the land in Lagos are lands surrounded by water or you have a lot, other percentage of it with water. Now, people still, more people are coming to Lagos, more people are in Lagos. There is enough housing deficit in Lagos. That means people will find a way to build their own house. So what do we need to do is to realize that this water is not an enemy. The first thing about water the government needs to focus on and everyone needs to focus on is the flow of the water. That means you can build houses around water, but just make sure that there is a proper flow. There are people that feed on where there is water. You can't totally eradicate that from our culture. So no sand filling? Now, there are times you have to reclaim land. Some land don't need reclaiming. They don't need a proper challenge for the land to be strong enough for you to either do piling or raft to build a house. And so those are the things. So developers have to work with government. There are different people have to work with all of those things to make mm. it happen. Like I said, that's what we have done in the last couple of 10 years. Mm. This year, make it 10 years yeah. we have been doing this to be able Thank to you. help. Um, Thank make you it happen. very much. Yes. I think it's really great having you on the show. Thank you very much. When we go on a break, we'll come back and talk, to, talk about the last segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. <laughs> 